Hey everyone, so in today's video I want to talk about something that's on the progress tracker and caught my eye when it was first added, which is the 600i being brought up to gold standard later this year. The 600i is one of my favorite ships and I'm really intrigued to see what they end up doing with it at the end of the year and in this video I want to talk about what I want to see, what I think we'll end up with, and also I want to hear from you guys. Before we start though, if you end up enjoying this video, please consider leaving a like and or subscribing and if you really want to help me out you can become a channel member by hitting the join button. I really appreciate it. So starting off, I just want to quickly go over what gold standard means. It basically means that CIG is completely done with the ship and are satisfied with how it's implemented into the game. Now I don't think they'll ever be completely done, because there's always going to be slight balance changes or changes to the flight model, but it should mean no large changes will happen to the ship, especially the ship's design past that point. So we actually have a ship that is currently considered gold standard, which is the Aegis Gladius, and that got finished up earlier this year. Now for the Gladius, the changes before and after this process weren't all that major. It mainly was just a slight pass on the exterior looks and the addition of a ton of flaps to access components and stuff. But yeah, supposedly the ship is good to go. There's definitely going to be some changes to its functionality as more of the game systems come online so that we can actually start using those component access bays to swap out parts and maybe do repairs. And there's an upcoming HUD UI change that will change the experience in the cockpit a little bit. But in terms of the rest of the characteristics of the ship, it's supposedly complete. Now the Gladius was the first ship to get this extra polish pass because it's so heavily featured in Squadron 42, so they really need it to be done and ready for that game, but there's also a few other vehicles that have been getting that treatment or will be getting that treatment this year. So one of these vehicles is the tiny grey cat buggy, which might be another thing that's going to be used in Squadron 42, or maybe they're just getting it done now because they know that that thing's not really going to be getting any new groundbreaking features in the future. Another more interesting one though is the Retaliator, which seems to be having a lot of work done just based on how long it's scheduled to be worked on, and you can see that there's concept teams involved here too, which I'm guessing was for the design of the Retaliator's modular bay replacements. So if you don't know, the Retaliator's torpedo bays are eventually going to be able to be swapped out for other useful modules like cargo bays, living modules, and even a dropship module. And these probably had to be reconcepted since it's been a while since they were announced, and then they were handed over to the vehicle team to implement into the game. Now I did look at the roadmap and I don't see the retaliator modularity on there anymore. I don't know if it's just temporarily removed because they're having tech issues getting this new feature implemented, but it does seem like the modules will be ready to go soon and will be ready as soon as they get that tech issue figured out, if that's what's going on. Beyond that, we have work being done to bring the Vandal fleet to gold standard, so we won't be seeing that until Squadron 42. And then finally we have the 600i. So I am a bit confused as to why this is such a priority right now. I'll go into more detail in a bit, but the 600i, while flawed, is still a generally functional and even enjoyable ship to fly around in the verse right now. So unless the 600i is also part of the Squadron 42 campaign, it's hard to understand why it's being prioritized like this. The Gladius and the Retaliator make sense to me, because they're very common ships in the UEE Navy, and will be a big part of that game I assume, so yeah, it's just weird to see a large luxury touring vessel being worked on in a similar manner. So other than it possibly being a major part of Squadron 42, the only other reason I can think of for this being the case is the elusive 400i, and them wanting to separate the 600i a little bit more, to give that ship a better space to slot into. Talking about the 400i though, despite the April Fool's joke and all the teasing from CIG about this ship, it does still seem like it's eventually going to be a thing, and at the moment, if its leaked stats are correct, it would really make the 600i a tough sell, even if it doesn't end up being all that much cheaper. From the last we've seen of the hardpoints, its weaponry, shielding, and cargo are not quite as good as the 600i, but comparable, so unless the 600i gets changes, the 400i could possibly make it seem like a bit of a bloated ship that's unnecessarily big for the features that it has. So yeah, when I go into the changes that I think we might see made to the 600i, the 400i is going to be a big part of why I think there's a possibility that it might be getting more functionality in this polish pass, and not just a shuffling around of the interior to make it make more sense. I'm really on the fence about this though, because taking a look back at that progress tracker, the retaliator seems like it should be less work than a major 600i overhaul would be, unless it's getting more changes than just the modules, and it had much more time scheduled than the 600i does, so I don't know how much work they could feasibly do on the 600i in this seemingly short period. But CIG does have a ton of origin ships to reference and pull assets from, with the massive 890 jump and possibly things from the 400i, so maybe it's just going to be a very efficient process, which is why they don't have too much time scheduled for that. That. But yeah, I want to hear from you guys because I really don't even have a strong opinion myself on this because we just don't know all that much at the moment. Do you think they're bringing it to gold standard for Squadron or because of overlap with the 400i? And do you think they're just going to be rearranging the interior or do you think we'll see some additional functionality added? 
Before we get into the 600 eyes flaws and what I'd like to see them do with it, I want to take a bit of time to appreciate the good parts of the ship, because there's at least as many good parts as there are bad. I'd say its most indisputably great feature is its exterior design. This is one of my favorite ships, and it really looks great, especially for how large it is. It's really streamlined and sleek, and it looks like a fancy luxurious ship without being super over the top. Also, as a pilot you've got one of the best cockpit views in the game. Besides this annoying light here, you've got a pretty unobstructed view of whatever you might be exploring, or exploding, and it's really a joy to fly compared to some other ships where all you get to look at are various struts. This view continues to the captain's quarters, and while it would be nice to have a feature to have some shutters in here at some point, this is still a very special place, and I think I honestly prefer it to the 890's captain's quarters, despite their much larger size. That view is just incredible, and since I don't actually live in there, I don't have to worry about the blinds not being there. And then the last great feature I'd say this ship has is its surprising combat ability. Now it doesn't really have as big of an advantage over the constellations now that their shield holes are fixed, but still, having that large size generator is very nice, and even though this is a pretty big and slow ship, the range that you get with size 5 weapons means you usually have time to get on target before they get too close to you, and you can often take out your targets before you see them. It's not as engaging of an experience as something like a light fighter is, but it's definitely unique and I'd recommend everyone try it at some point. But yeah, even at the moment, without any exploration, luxury, or touring gameplay, the 600i is still a pretty fun ship to fly around in, and it's great to look at too. Moving on to the issues, there are some major problems with this ship. Most of these are related to the overall layout, but I'd also say this thing is lacking in features for its price and size. Now I'm mainly going to focus on the Explorer variant here, because I'd say it's a bit worse from that standpoint, but I'll bring up a few things relating to the touring as well. But yeah, I'm going to start with the layout issues, because I think that's probably going to be what they address when they work on the ship. It would be nice if we also got some bonus feature additions as well, but I think we're pretty much guaranteed to see a floor plan change since it really makes no sense at the moment. Starting with what I think is the most glaring issue, look at the bridge here. You've got a reasonable array of seats for the remote turret gunners and the pilot at the front here, but then all of the space behind it is empty. This is like as big as the interior of the 300i, and there's literally nothing here. Now look at these scanning seats in this room here just off of the bridge. They're not all that big, they're probably the perfect size for that empty space on the bridge actually. So yeah, just starting off, that's already a massive waste of space. And then further examining this room here, if you look at what portion of the area is used for passing around the globe and the scanning seats on the exterior of the room, and what's actually being used for these scanning and mapping stations in here, they take up about an even amount of space, which is not great. They could save a ton of room if there was only one walkway, or some other solution that didn't turn so much of the room into a sidewalk. So yeah, already there's a ton of wasted space in the ship, and I'd say these are the greatest offenders, but there are a few more issues. So moving on back, we get to this area with a small stairway and an elevator that doesn't exit the ship, and I think this elevator and really entire hallway here could be removed to save space, but what really doesn't make sense is for the armory to be here. This is one of the points in the ship that is furthest away from any of the exit points, so having items stored here that you'll need when you're leaving the ship is pretty silly in my opinion. So I think a decent solution for this would be to potentially move those scanning seats up to the bridge, move the globe or whatever that is to the back of the room above the cargo bay, and then have the armory right next to the personnel elevator. Then you could actually grab stuff on the way out and not have to come all the way back here to get suited up. Now all the way at the back of the ship we get to the recreation, kitchen, and bar area. For an exploration ship I think this is maybe a bit excessive, but again there's other areas of the ship where space could be made for things if it's needed, so I don't think they really need to cut into any of this to make room for stuff. I actually like this area, with the sizable bar and kitchen and that great view from the rear window. I wish it extended a bit lower, because from some of the lower seats it can be pretty hard to see much out of beyond just the sky, which is kind of a shame if you're planet side, but it can still be pretty nice if you find some mountains to land next to. But even here, there's things that don't make sense. So if we continue down these fancy stairs, we get to that kitchen that I was talking about, but off to the side we have the main engineering areas where all of the components for the ship are. And what's worse is this area doesn't even connect to the other downstairs areas, meaning the only way to access this area for vital repairs is by going through the bar. That already doesn't make sense because your crew is going to be bugging any guests that are on board, but also in the scenario that a crew member has to go from the crew quarters to servicing the ship, they'd have to get up, take an elevator upstairs, walk through the bar, and then down the stairs to get into here. It's not exactly convenient or fast in an emergency situation. And then another odd thing is that a part of the ship's cargo space is actually in these component rooms on these racks. I guess it's a decent place to have to keep spares, but still it seems a bit odd to me because any commodities you buy will also fill up this area. 
Compared to everything else though, this is a small oversight. So to fix this downstairs, I'd like to see the whole downstairs connect and have stairs between all the areas so that you could get rid of that second elevator and make room for other features. Maybe an improved crew area that isn't so open and weird, or maybe even more cargo. But yeah, just quickly, this crew area is a little bit strange in how little privacy each member gets, especially for how much open space there is in the middle of the room. They definitely could have had individual crew bunks like are found on the 890, but at least the bathrooms are sizable and nice. And then moving on through the rest of the ship, there's not that much wrong with the cargo bay. It nicely fits a large rover, and there's more storage racks on the sides for cargo, so you can carry cargo and a rover at the same time. I do have a few gripes with this area, like it might be nice to be able to take additional cargo in the place of a vehicle, but there's no cargo grids on the elevator, so you can't use it for that purpose. That's not all that big of a deal, because this really isn't a cargo ship, but it might be nice in a ship with already so few features for its size. And then again, if you look around the exterior of this room, it's nice to have all the space to be able to walk around a rover if you have one parked in there, but just like the room above it, a large amount of the floor plan is going to these walkways, since they surround the entire room. So it would be nice if they potentially explored a different design that didn't waste so much of the space. So yeah, I think we're definitely going to see some changes to this layout, and it's really the layout that's the problem here. Most of the actual rooms and stuff are pretty nice in my opinion. It would be nice to have more windows, but I don't think they could do that without changing the exterior too much, and it doesn't seem like they're going to do that with the time frame they have. So maybe they could compromise by adding some of the screens like the 890 will eventually have, which are supposedly meant to display what's outside the ship, or at least that's what I think they're supposed to do. I think they're disabled at the moment for performance reasons, but I'm pretty sure that these screens in the captain's quarters on the 890 90 and also all of the guest rooms are supposed to either display some scenery or a view from outside the ship. So it'd be nice to see those carried over to the 600i, especially in the 600i tourings guest rooms if they don't add any windows to those since those feel pretty cramped in their current state. Oh, and having a functional docking port would also be nice. But yeah, do you guys agree with my general suggestions or would you move things around differently? I'm sure what they come up with this time in terms of layout will be great and I do hope they make use of some of the ship's wasted space. So I do think that it's most likely that they're just going to shuffle around the interior of the ship, but in the case where they decide to really give the 600i the capability it deserves, I think there's a few reasons why making it an overall more capable ship would be justified. But yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I'm mainly going to be talking about the exploration variant because I think that one is the most lacking in functionality for its intended role. The Turing's main issues, in my opinion, are just the space wasted by that spiral staircase and atrium area, the non-luxurious feeling rooms, and then the overall layout issues that I discussed earlier. But yeah, with a few changes to that layout, which could even make a bit more room for the passengers, I think that it's a decent luxury passenger ship for the size and price, and should hopefully be a great starting point for a luxury passenger transport gameplay. So yeah, the touring variant in my opinion is not too bad because it's cheaper, it's pretty well set up for the role with the nice bar and entertainment area in the rear, and besides the general layout flaws, it's pretty good, but there's also not really any other competition for that role. You have the 890 above it for your large scale executive transport, and the Starliner for general passenger transport, but other than the much smaller Phoenix, there's really nothing else available for the job. Now the Phoenix is a whole nother issue, but at the moment it's just not on the same level as the 600i touring for transporting guests. On the other hand, the exploration category is a bit more crowded, and also much more objective in terms of judging a ship's feature set. So not only do you have the Aquila and the Carrick, both of which are great ships on either side of the 600i in price and size, but there's also other good options like the Endeavor which we'll eventually be seeing. Now the Carrick obviously is a much better exploration ship than the 600i with its incredible list of features, but I'd say in a lot of ways the cheaper and smaller Aquila wins as well. It's got a detachable snub, which the 600i does not have, and then a lot of its other features are on par with it, like overall combat capability, having that dedicated scanning array, crew space for four, which is just one less than the 600i, and decent living accommodations that aren't on the level of the 600i's, but should definitely be adequate, and also space for a rover. Now it is worth noting that the rover takes up pretty much all of the cargo room in the ship, so you can't carry a ton of cargo and a rover, whereas in the 600i, the cargo and the rover are separate. It's hard to say this is a total win for the 600i though, since it only has 40 SU of cargo space to the Connie's 96. Also, the Constellation is just much more manageable with its smaller size, which could definitely be an advantage for exploration. You can see here how the 600i's pretty large length makes it a bit of a pain to set down on a planet, and while the landing gear obviously wasn't working correctly in this case, you can see how it it might be harder to land a 90 meter ship than a 60 meter ship. So yeah, while from a size and price perspective you'd think these two would be different classes of ship, it's a lot closer in more ways than you might think. 
And then the Endeavor, which we don't know much about at the moment, will eventually be a very capable ship or a variety of gameplay loops, but one of these is definitely going to be exploration, and with a similar price to the 600i, that's going to be a very hard ship for it to compete with, at least outright on features. So yeah, while I don't think they're going to make it do that, or compete with the Carrick's massive amount of features as well, I do hope that they add something to help distance it a bit from the Connie, or at least make up for the lack of that snub. The Carrick and the Connie both can bring a smaller ship along with them, and while we don't know at the moment how useful this will be when you're exploring. I imagine having a smaller ship to scout around in will be useful in a lot of scenarios. So yeah, not having this feature in a supposedly better ship is kind of odd, and I don't see them adding a snub bay to the 600i either, but I think one thing that they could add in the space that I talked about being available earlier is a med bay. Now I know there's a lot of people who like med bays being a pretty rare feature, since it'll make medical gameplay more valuable, and I generally agree with that, but I think the 600i would be justified in having at least a small one. First of all, it's a luxury ship, which should mean that the passenger's condition is a top priority, so it kind of makes sense for it to have one. Also, the 890 already has a tier 1 bed, so it's not like it would be entirely new for Origin, so I think it would be fine to put a tier 2 bed, or at least a tier 3 in here. And then from a more meta point of view, I think this makes the most sense for a feature to add for the 600i because it really needs some more functionality to distance it from the 400i, which will also have a lot of the same combat, cargo, and vehicle capabilities, supposedly. I don't see drones or anything more industrial like what's found on the Carrick fitting in with the Origin design, but a med bay I think would be a good fit. And yeah, with changes like moving the scanning seats to the bridge, getting rid of some of the inefficient pathing, and removing the extra elevator, there'd definitely be space for that. Let me know what you guys think about this. It's not a new idea, but I really do think it makes sense, especially if they do end up adding a 400i. Like I said, the 600i is already a pretty great ship, but I just think it should be a little more capable for its size and price. So that's all I have for this video. I'm interested in hearing what you guys think on all of this, and what you'd like to see done in this gold standard work. Also, are you guys excited for Alien Week and the new cargo ship that's supposedly coming up? We're hopefully going to see some stuff on that on Inside Star Citizen this week, and I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, now I want to thank my members, The Pair Effect, Starlet Domina, and Great Watch 93 Thank you all so much for supporting the channel, and if you guys want to support me, you can do that by hitting the like and subscribe button, or if you really want to help me out, you can become a channel member by hitting that join button. I really appreciate all of you guys' support. Thanks for watching!